Hey there. I'm just doing some thinking about my cousin, Joey. My cousin, Joey, was a very, very important person to me when I was a kid. Main reason is because I was an only child. I still am an only child, but <laughs> in the past tense, I was an only child growing up. And I think about that a lot, especially now because I have two children and I see all the time what it's like with two kids. Uh, whole different story. Uh, I didn't have a brother or a sister growing up, and I was used to doing a lot of things by myself. So whenever I would see my cousins, usually for a birthday party or for a holiday like Thanksgiving or Christmas, it was always extra special for me because it was the closest thing I had to siblings. Um, and my cousin Joey, uh, he was also an only child. And uh, whenever I was with my cousins, my cousin Joey, my cousin Donnie, my cousin Johnny, my cousin Polly, my cousin Charlie, and uh, Sherry. Uh, Joey stood out. Uh, I don't know. He was the oldest, and he uh, was a big, big influence on me. He um, was always into what I perceived as cooler things than me, and I always tried to, you know, do my homework in between times I'd see him and then come back and be like, yo, I did all that stuff you showed me and now I'm cool. And then he'd be like, yo, now we're doing this. And, uh, you know, it was usually in the form of, uh, you know, music or video games or just, you know, hobbies like being into comics or just the way we, you know, decorated our rooms and the posters we put on our walls and stuff like that. Um, but the single biggest influence that he had on me was introducing me to this band called Lawn Mower Death. And Lawnmower Death is not what I would say a very popular thrash metal band, which is what they are. They're a thrash metal band from the United Kingdom. Um, and this is the early 90s. And, you know, this was already in, like, kind of a context of my cousin Joey being like, yo, dude, you should be listening to, like, you should be listening to Slayer and Megadeth. And, you know, the, it definitely had a thrash metal influence on me. And this is back when I was still listening to, you know, DJ Jesse Jeff and the Fresh Prince or, you know, my parents, like Genesis Tapes, Richard Marks, you know, stuff like that. And I was like, okay, all right, let's, 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 let's get with it. And I was also, maybe actually, you know, that was the beginning. At this point, it was a little further along. I was listening to like grunge and stuff at this time, because this was like 91, 92. And, uh... Anyways, I think about this often, but I just had this memory and I just kind of want to get this out and maybe I'll talk this through again later when I'm a little bit clearer on it because I'm driving right now going to, going to a gig. Uh, so, I remember not only Joey introducing me to Longmore Death, I'm going to talk specifically about how he introduced Longmore Death to me. So, he didn't even have the official like cassette tape, CD, or vinyl. He had a dub. He had a, you know, he had a recording that he dubbed from a friend on tape, and it was the 1991 album, Ooh Crikey, It's Lawn Mower Death. Ooh Crikey. I didn't even, that's the first time I heard, like, that expression, you know, I didn't really even realize this is, like, you know, a group from, from the United Kingdom, and there's some different terminology there, but I remember he had a really good drawing of the Lawn Mower Death logo that he put on the cassette uh, sleeve and and he's like lawn mower death and that just got imprint imprinted in my mind and I'll never forget he did a good job selling lawn mower death to me because he's like yo Jeff you know you know that you're like that Nirvana stuff you know what smells like Teen Spirit did you know that Kurt Cobain and Nirvana stole tell, smells like Teen Spirit from lawn mower death and I was like what what are you talking about he goes listen to this song and I'm gonna have to fact check and, and double check which one it was. It was one of the first few tracks on, on, on the record. Um, but it went. Which is not exactly the same thing. Because, you know, it sounds like he's very. And, and I just thought of this because I was listening to the radio and I was listening to the song More Than a Feeling. And I thought that also sounded like the same riff. Because all of these things 
had that same rhythmic concept. They have that. Uh, right? So, anyways, like, that hooked me on lawnmower death for my whole life. Like, <laughs> really, because ever since that day, I was on a quest to find the record who Crikey gets lawnmower death on, on tape, CD, whatever. And I would go to every single record store, and I'd always go to L, and I'd look for lawnmower, and I could never, ever find it. Until one day, gosh, I, I forget the name of the, the spot, but it was um, it was on Fingston Road in uh, like Northbrook or Glenview, and it was a place we'd stop on my way to doctor checkups at Glenview Hospital, and. Record City, something like, you know, something like that, and uh, they had maybe a bigger selection of music there, and they had a copy of Ukraine Gets Long Word Up on cassette tape, and I could not believe it. I bought it, and I was so excited about it, and I could talk a lot about Lawnmower Death more specifically later, but you know, the big arc of the story is that that was my first discovery. I was so excited probably to show that to my cousin. I don't have that memory specifically logged in here, but I do remember continuing the quest for Lawnmower Death because I eventually, you know, wanted it on CD, but I couldn't find that anywhere. Um, but then eventually, I think in maybe 1997, because uh, I was, by that point, you know, to, to my cousin's recommendations, I was a full, full out metalhead at this point and had gotten into more extreme music and I was going to shows and I was picking up, uh, you know, zines and other publications and stuff like that, mail order catalogs. And I got uh, an Earache Records catalog from, I want to say, 1997. And Earache Records was the record label that Lawnmower Death was on, which I learned about Earache Records because of Lawnmower Death. Once I finally got that tape, because uh, before that it was just that logo that my my cousin had drawn out for me. Um, so I got that catalog, and I was able to import a copy of Who Cried Against Lawnmower Death, and I was able to get a copy of um, the uh, Return of the Fabulous Metal Bozo Clowns, their, their follow-up record, which I had. Coincidentally, also, I had already found that. I found that because I would I would go to every single record store, and I'd always look for Lawnmower Death. It was just like when I used to go to video stores as a kid. I would always look for Faces of Death. Do they have Faces of Death? Nope. This place is probably not worth my time. If they had it, okay, I bet they have a pretty good horror selection here. That was always the the marker um, back in the mom and pop video store days. But yeah, going to record stores. You know, Rose Records was my local record store. They never had Lawnmower Death there ever. Um, but eventually, I found uh, the Return of the Fabulous Metal Bozo Clowns, and I was so excited. I, mean, I do remember I was so excited to show my cousin Joey this because I had a feeling he didn't know about this one. So I was gonna be like, "Dude, did you hear this Lawnmower Death?" And it's so crazy. It's like I remember like so excited to listen to that for the first time, and when I put it on, the first two minutes is like clown music straight up clown music from a carnival and I was like what is this like maybe this is a joke maybe maybe something's wrong with this CD but then it does this awesome like crossfade into like and like that record's actually really good it's better it's better produced and you know I think the song is a little better um still that fun com and this is another reason why I'm going to end up being so cool because like I thought they were super cool and mysterious and like you know, hard to find, and you know, it was, it was, all those elements, you know, kind of added up for me, and like why I was interested in them. And they weren't like necessarily the same as like another Megadeth or Slayer, or, you know, Anthrax or something like that. Maybe, maybe closer to Anthrax than anything. It's just like there was a little more humor. You know, I almost almost relating them more to Frank Zappa. Uh, but anyways, like yeah, that that record like really kind of. I figured out what Lawnmower Death was all about at that point. But I always remember, I didn't have like the actual Earache Records uh, version of that CD. I had like the US distributed version that was on Relativity Records. And I and I remembered that that was also uh, the label on the spine of the uh, cassette tape for Who Crikey, It's Lawnmower Death. 
it still said ERIC records, but it said relativity records as well. And it had this, you know, spiral, like, you know, theory of relativity, I remember. Um, and I think I was aware that it was not necessarily the, uh, you know, the original release or something like that. And this is all way before I was into, like, collecting and trying to authenticate stuff. It was just, like, I was obsessed, being an only child, you know, looking at all the details. And this stuff always kind of stood out to me. So, uh, I, uh, got that mail order catalog in around 1997 for Eric Records, like official Eric Records, and I ordered Ukraine Gets All Enough because I never had that on CD as an import, and I decided to get another copy of Return of the Fabulous Metal Bozicons because I had a feeling it was going to be a little bit different than the U.S. distributed version that I had, and I was right. I was so excited when these came in, there were lots of subtle differences. Uh, and both of the CDs had, uh, you know, an Eric Records import sticker on the front. And um, that just kind of, like, sealed the deal for me. Um, there's some other memories. Like, I was so obsessed with the Lawnmower Death logo. And I remember, like, the um, the original logo on Ooh Crikey, It's Lawnmower Death was somewhat obstructed because it said, like, Ooh Crikey over the logo. And I was equally on a quest to find, like, a clean version of the logo, you know? Um, and what did I end up doing? I, I, so at some point I got the uh, Kids in America 12 inch vinyl single. I don't know if I ordered that or if I found that somewhere. I just saw, at some point I got that. I mean, that um, is the one song they made a music video for that's also on the uh, Hard and Heavy Volume 6. Teen. <laughs> Volume 16 of Heart and Heavy, there was a little feature on uh, Law and Murder Death with an interview with Qualcast Mutilator, and it would split between the interview and the music video for for that Kids in America cover by Kim Wilde. That was the original version, Kim Wilde. Also, how I discovered that song, how I discovered even who Kim Wilde was, was because of Law and Murder Death. Law and Murder Death taught me a lot, <laughs> interestingly. Uh, and really, it's my cousin Joey who taught me a whole lot. Um, so, uh, that was, uh, that record was something I got, and I was excited about the, um, I was excited about the, uh, the 12-inch vinyl because that album cover had an unobstructed version of their logo, and I think I scanned it at, um, my friend, uh, Lori Anderson's house. Her, her dad had a scanner. We did not have a scanner, so this is, again, 19, middle, 1990s, late, middle 1990s, um, and, uh, and I was so excited because after we scanned the Lawnmower Death logo, I was able to like use it as like the background on like our uh, Macintosh LC 575. Uh, when I was all into customizing icons and backgrounds and fun stuff like that. Um, so let me wrap up this story. So um, Lawnmower Death was a big thing. I was really into the logo. I was really into figuring out all these details about the album. It was big deal for my cousin introducing it to me. It's a big deal. And the reason I'm telling this story again is because I was just listening to uh, More Than a Feeling on the radio and I was like, dude, this also sounds like, it smells like Seeing Spirit Riff. This is definitely way before that. And, you know, I know the Lawnmower Death Record and the Nirvana Nevermind both came out around the same time in 1991. I'm pretty sure Lawnmower Death's record came out first, but, you know, it smells like Teen Spirit was being played for a long time before the record came out too, so just like, whatever. Everyone is kind of feeling that rhythm, and that became kind of a trope of uh, grunge music, I'd say. Um, you know, especially in the drums and everything, everybody was doing that beat, no matter what you were playing on the guitar and stuff. So, um, that was cool. But yeah, the big, the big peak of this whole story was, you know, uh, later in life I was in um, Tokyo, Japan for the first time, and I was really excited to uh, go to some metal stores um, in, uh, I think it was in Shinjuku, and um, it was called uh, Tokyo Dis District, I want to say, something like that, and uh, dude, this was like three or four floors of like very specific categorized metal, like they had pagan metal, power metal, thrash metal, I just like all the subgenres of black metal, and um, I was so excited because I found another copy of Return of the Fabulous Metal Bozo Clowns in Japan after a whole life of like, you know, questing and obsessing about finding these records. And I was so excited that it was yet another version 
of the record. It was used. It was that like the you know the used section of, of the spot, but we got it nonetheless. And it was another version. I think it was on like Toy Factory Records or Toy Box, something something like that. All earache, but like Eric had these other you know distributors for international stuff. So um, that is how that came to be. So I ended up acquiring three copies of Return of the Fabulous Metal Bozo Clowns um, for those reasons. <laughs> and uh, and I still <laughs> did not buy Lawnmower Death's follow-up record, Billy, <laughs> which came out after that. Um, I don't even think I've listened to it. And the, the problem was, is the logo. <laughs> they didn't use their cool Lawnmower Death logo on that record, so I just assumed this wasn't the same lawnmower death. <laughs> Music might be alright in that same vein. I'll have to check I'll still have to check it out sometime. I mean that's another album I might look for and decide to buy if I see that used in a you know uh used CD section at some point. But uh but yeah all I needed really was those other other albums and uh yeah I was always just so excited to show my cousin Joey. At one point I ordered a um a vintage t-shirt off of eBay, also incredibly, incredibly rare. I never see these things. I, I, I think I still have one more death shirt as like a uh, saved search on my eBay um, account and it, nothing ever shows up. And I had it, I had a, a, a real vintage, uh, you know, Kids in America tour shirt that had, you know, the Statue of Liberty on the front with the guys floating around and on the back it had something tour dates or some other thing or whatever but the problem was that like I really wanted it to be a size large it was an extra large and it wasn't really like image graphic wise something I really I didn't really care about wearing the Statue of Liberty much <laughs> it wasn't like my ideal I, I wish I had, had a vintage uh Ukraiki it's all more done album cover but again I only see reprints of this thing at best I would really want a vintage one a large and I doubt I'll ever see that. So I mean, just like, and it's interesting because like all this stuff I'm describing is like what everybody's super into right now regarding like uh, video game collecting and VHS collecting and you know spotting variants and looking at international variants and all these like you know if it has a little trademark symbol or whatever. And I was totally way way into all of these little nuances when it came to um, at least Lawn Mord Out and Earache Records and you know albums I was customs and not being able to find in my stores and again all this is you know interesting because you know this is all before you could really order stuff online or you know have an ebay place or whatever to find stuff i mean like i created my ebay account in 2002 i i know i was using ebay in like the late 90s or at least checking it out i don't know if i actually ordered anything about an account back in the day but like you know lawnmower death and stuff like that was always like the first few things i was searching for um back then, I mean, it was just, I didn't really see it, because it was, you know, it should be more popular, I'm trying to, you know, raise some one more death awareness here, but really, it just goes back to my cousin Joey, and, uh, you know, his influence, and I can talk about him, and other stories of him a whole lot, but, yeah, just remembering the way he drew the logo out on his cassette tape, and the way he explained how the one song was, like, the same riff as uh, Smells Like Teen Spirit, because he was trying to get me away from Nirvana and more into metal, and he was successful. I mean, I had my, my return to Nirvana, <laughs> uh, but I definitely had my departure from Nirvana as well, because Kurt Cobain and Nirvana were, were my favorites, my absolute favorites back in the day. But Lawnmower Death was sort of like the uh, transition out of it, and cousin Joey really knew how to sell it to me <laughs> so thank you Joey again you've heard it my whole life and your whole life how much your uh, influence and your lawnmower death recommendation has meant very very meaningful things to me but I really appreciate it and uh, that's my little story for today